Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 31. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your website look a little bit more uh, website-y. So uh, yeah, uh, you can see that I'm working with the navigation that we had in the previous tutorial. Unfortunately, I've added a little bit of space here by mistake, so I'm gonna have to try and uh, get rid of that. It's something I actually just noticed now. Uh, and then if we take a look at uh, the content of the site, I've gone ahead and created an image that takes up like the full width of our container and then a uh, an article. So this is just a bunch of lorem ipsum, which is filler content to make the website look like it has text, even though I don't know exactly what I'd like to write here just yet. Um, so it's great to like see what a website will look like with content but you don't wanna sit and write all the content yourself. You're probably gonna wait for whoever you're selling the website to, to give you content, right? Uh, so yeah, that is uh, what we're gonna be taking a look at in this tutorial. So let's jump over to my text editor um, and we're gonna have to add uh, uh, the second part code here. So I'm just gonna add um, a comment so that we know where the code for the second part of this tutorial starts and that's the CSS code, right? I'm just gonna create a little bit of space here. And then for our index file, I'm gonna change this up a little bit. So we've got the same header, obviously, as the previous tutorial. Uh, what I'd like to do is take this article out and place the article below the section, right? And in fact, what I wanna do is now indent all of this stuff. So command and curly brace to just indent all of that. And then I'm going to create another div over here. I'm gonna give this div the same class of TM container, right? And so that's just gonna be a container or a wrapper for our site to center it and give it a max width of 1,200 pixels. So that's the nice thing about uh, classes is that they are reusable. Um, so something like that container class, we can just place wherever we need a container, right? So let me uh, let me go back here and just take this aside, the article and the section and place them all within uh, the container, right? So I'm gonna save that now. And of course, nothing's gonna just nothing's gonna show up yet. So what I'd like to do is add an image to our section. So let's go ahead and say image source is equal to uh, alt is equal to something as well. And uh, I'm gonna grab this image. So let's open up Finder, look at images, and I've got this image called Strasbourg River. So this is a picture of me in Strasbourg. Um, I suppose I don't need to open it just yet. We'll take a look at that in the browser. So let me go ahead and uh, paste the URL, make sure that we are going to the images folder first and then to uh, the river image. So let's come back here and refresh. Okay, so now uh, all well, the rest of the content disappeared, but we have our image displaying in the top section over here. There's no space between the image and the heading and I probably wanna add some spacing in here. Uh, but other than that, um, I also want to add in the uh, article content, right? So let's come back here and go to the article. And generally, an article will always start off with an H1. Uh, the reason why is because when Google ranks your website, it's gonna look at two things to give you a ranking. One of those is gonna be this title. It's gonna look at a bunch of other things, but. Uh, important stuff is gonna be this page title and also what is in your heading one. So you don't wanna have like three heading ones and confuse Google, you just wanna have one heading one for the article. Um, and so let's just say this is a really interesting story about France, because I was in Strasbourg, right? Uh, pretty cool photo actually with the tram in the background and the skyline is a very good day. I remember this day like out of my head um, and it happened last year still, so pretty good day. Well, yeah, where else do you remember a day from out of your head? But I mean, like, I remember it so well. I remember it like, like it was yesterday. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got our H1 
And um, let me go ahead and add in a paragraph over here. And for this paragraph, I'm just gonna type and lorem, hit tab, and that's going to generate uh, something called lorem ipsum, which is filler content, right? Um, so I'm just gonna remove that little and symbol. And uh, yeah, let's copy and paste this paragraph a few times. So uh, something that I said earlier is we only want one H1. So if you're gonna have a second heading on your page, that's gonna be an H2. You can always style the H2 with another class to make it look like an H1, but you don't really wanna use two H1s uh, most of the time. Okay, and then let's uh, paste that paragraph below here. So let's just say this is a subheading. And I think I'm gonna copy and paste this para oh, this uh, H2. And we'll say this is a list and just add a list below here. So LI or well, UL and then LI, come on, Quinton. Okay, UL, LI. Um, and I think I'm gonna just place three list items. So let's get them ready so long and uh, just copy paste some text from bits and pieces of this paragraph, I guess. Um, right, so now we've got our list and then at the bottom of this list, obviously we'll just add in like a conclusion or something. So you'll usually conclude your story um, with a little bit of a paragraph and then right at the bottom, you might wanna put your author name. So I'm gonna add in a paragraph and then add a small tag. And what a small tag does is just make all text within it smaller. So it'll be like half the size of a normal paragraph. And we'll just say written by Quentin Watt or something like that. And you can also link the article or link this title to like a page about you. Right, so let's save that now, come back to the page and refresh. And now we have all of our content displaying on the side as well, um, but it doesn't quite look very nice. Everything's kind of bunched up against each other. There's no spacing between the headings and the paragraphs. There's no spacing between the paragraphs and the other headings, no spacing between the image. And uh, that is because when we were uh, yesterday, or yeah, it was yesterday for me, but <laughs> I don't know when, maybe only 10, 20 minutes ago for you guys. Um, we uh, uh, styled our style sheet with this rule, which took away all margins and paddings um, on all elements by default. So we're gonna need to throw in a bunch of margins and paddings and spacing for some of our elements. Uh, so what I wanna do is uh, for our paragraphs, I wanna add a margin uh, bottom of 20 pixels, just so that all paragraphs have 20 pixels below them. Then uh, for any heading like H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. So that's how you style uh, multiple elements at the same time. You just add a comma between each one of them and they will all get the same styling. And I think I'm just gonna add a margin bottom on these of uh, 20 picks, uh, 10, let's go 15, no, 10, right? Um, and the reason why is because I still want the headings to appear close enough to the paragraph so that they, you know that this heading goes with that paragraph and this heading goes with that paragraph, but there's 20 pixels of spacing on the this paragraph and this heading to kind of just separate that a little bit more, right? Something else that we can notice is that our unordered list, uh, the bullet points are pe appearing on the outside of the containers, like it's not aligned with anything. So I think our unordered list, um, and in fact, ordered lists will have the same sort of styling. We just need to add a margin to the left of 20 pixels and then a margin bottom of also 20 pixels, right? And uh, that now lines them up a little bit and also gives a little bit of space on uh, the bottom, right? So this is starting to look a little bit more like a website. Uh, I just wanna add a white background and um, maybe some space above here. And also you can see 
This styling rule, the unordered list and uh, ordered list styling rule has unfortunately added a little bit of space to our navigation. So I might wanna just shoot up to TM nav um, and grab that unordered list item. So uh, just, just the unordered list, not the list items. And uh, just give this a margin bottom of zero pixels. Now, hopefully that removes the extra space. Right, so that's gone. Um, and then uh, in our content, uh, I'd actually like a margin on top of this and a margin uh, below this container. So let's add in an extra class here of um, TM content. Save this now. And uh, just go down to the bottom of the CSS here. Okay, add tm content. And I just wanna add a margin top of uh, 30 pixels and a margin bottom of 30 pixels. And doing it this way means that hopefully I don't overwrite the left and right uh, margins. So it should still be centered if you use a shortcut, you'll probably find that your article gets uncentered. Um, but doing it this way with the two styling rules should add space on the top and the bottom without throwing our content off the center, All right? So now we've got our image over here uh, all set up and um, I wonder if it's stretching out of the container, we'll have to see. So, uh, what I'd like to do as well, uh, and I could do this for TM content, but I, I think I'm actually gonna do it for each section. So I'm gonna give this section a class of uh, TM top A, so that's like our main section or the top section of our site. And uh, we'll probably come up with a styling rule for that in a moment. The next thing I wanna do is give the article a class of TM dash article. And I'm going to definitely style this. So let's uh, come back here. or save this and come back over to CSS and select TM article and also uh, T, TM, uh, uh, no, let's not, let's, not, let's not select them both at the same time. Uh, so TM article, and I wanna give this a uh, background of white, so ba background FFF and a padding of 30 pixels all the way around, so 30 pixels. And that should just generate a little bit of spacing for us. Um, great, so you can see that uh, now there's spacing between the text, where the text is and where the white part ends. If you didn't add the padding, obviously that spacing wouldn't be there and it'd probably look a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, this is starting to look a lot more like an article. Our, heading, our header image actually looks pretty good uh, the way it is. Um, but right now you can see that there is a little bit of uh, spacing underneath this image. Um, it's really, really small actually. I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to see it, but uh, if I zoom in, you can definitely see there's a bit of a gray line over here. So I wanna get rid of that. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna add in another styling rule, kind of a default one uh, for all images on my site. And I want to, either display them block or inline block, and that'll just get rid of the spacing underneath. If I want an image to display in line again, I can always add in another class. Um, but yeah, now that, uh, that tiny little line of white space, that's gone, right? Uh, something else I also want to do with my images is give it a max width of 100%. And the reason why I'm doing that is because sometimes an image can be a little bit too big for its container. Uh, I'm not sure if this, this will happen. Yeah, okay. You can see right now, as I make the browser smaller, everything else tends to get smaller, but the image doesn't, it doesn't resize. Uh, but if I add max width 100%, save this, and then come back to the browser and hit refresh, which is something I didn't do before I showed you this, now we can scale the browser and the image actually gets smaller to fit the size of 
the content or the space that it has, right? So that makes all images responsive, basically, that little line of code, right? So now we have uh, all of that styled and I'd say that's pretty much all I have for you guys in this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at maybe adding a bottom section and a footer or something like that. Uh, but yeah, you've got a pretty good idea of how to go about creating a website layout or a page layout and I'll see you guys in the next video. I just want to send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development and they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below and if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.